Have you ever pondered this often quoted passage and wondered why it was okay for God to take revenge on someone but not you? Have you ever wondered why you were not allowed to seek vengeance? Have you ever wondered why God would teach you one thing while He would do what looked like just the opposite? If not, do so for a moment before moving on. Revenge is always a sin from a humanistic perspective. Revenge is to get even with someone, to pay back hurt for hurt, pain for pain. Its motives are always evil. So for, you, so, so for you, revenge is always a sin. About God, why is revenge not a sin for Him? It is because He is able to do revenge from a motivation of pure love. That is not something you can master up and therefore you are prohibited from doing it. But God can and does and therefore you can finally leave it up to Him to take care of the matter. For your part, you are to love others with your actions. Also, everything God does or allows in your life is, ulti is ultimately rooted in love. This is supremely mysterious, yet deeply comforting. Holiness The basic meaning of, meaning of holiness is sit apart or separation. Many see holiness as the foremost attribute of all because holiness pervades all the other attributes of God and is consistent with all He is and does. Several features are embraced in the holiness of God. It has a transcendent emphasis, indicating He is absolutely distinct from all His creatures and exalted above them in infinite, in infinite majesty. Exodus 15.11 explained that in His holiness, God is without fear and awesome, revealed in the marvelous way He delivered Israel from Egyptians. Isaiah 57.15 described His transcendence, He is high and exalted, living on a high and whole place. It also has an ethical emphasis indicating he separates from moral evil or sin. God's holiness points to his majestic purity and ethical majesty. The foundation of this emphasis is Leviticus 11.44-45 Be holy for I am holy because God is morally pure. He cannot condone evil nor have any relationship to it. Psalm 11.46 in His holiness, God is the moral and ethical standard. He is the law. He sets the standard. He is untainted or stained from sin. Now, let's see. The other one is called relative attributes. Some attributes may be termed relative because they are related to something created. Eternal. The eternity of God is understood as God relating to time. By definition, it means that God is not limited or bound by time in any way. With God, there is no succession of events. He is above all temporal limitations. With Him, there is no distinction between the present, past, and future. But, but all things are equally and always present to Him. His eternity is expressed in Psalm 92, From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God's eternity extends backward to infinity and forward to infinity. Moreover, God's eternity is also related to His eternal role in His universal kingdom. Psalm 102.12 God's eternity is also related to His name. In Exodus 3.14, he, he informed Moses that His name is I am who I am. Some scholars relate His name Lord, verse 14, to I am who I am. Hence, God's name reflects His eternity in that He is the continually existing One. However, this is, not the, this is not to suggest that time is unreal or non-existent with God. While God is everything as an eternal now, He nonetheless, in relation to humanity and the rest of creation, sees a succession of events in time. You see an experienced, ta you see an experienced time as linear because you are fixed to time and cannot escape it. You cannot go to the past or out in, into the future. You are a slave to this chronos time. But God is not. He is a child of time. He created it and He existed when there was no time. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel. 1 Timothy 1.9 Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ for the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness 
a faith and knowledge resting on the hope of eternal life, which God does not lie, promised before the beginning of time, and at his appointed season he brought his word to light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of God our Savior. Titus 1, 1-3 If God is a child of time, he is in time as well, and not bound to it. Then time become irrelevant to him. The past is the same as the future, which is the same as the present. He is experiencing all of your past and future simultaneously with you right now. Everything you will do, think, be and feel is presently being experienced by God. When Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning God created, it includes the fourth dimension of our reality, time. Time is created element in our universe and is not itself eternal. Only God is eternal. This can have profound implication for a believer's life. One is the, the apparent contradiction between God's sovereignty and man's free will. That is God's divine decree or choosing us or rejecting us as our ability to choose or reject God. Praise, God, praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love He predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Ephesians 1, 3, 5 Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worship beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers serve beyond the river of the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 14 to 15.